four B four A to booking. Quarter two, quarter one. My name's Richard Parker. I'm the chief jailer here at the Anderson County Detention Facility. I've worked here since 2001. When I started, we had approximately 100 inmates in the jail. There were four females at that time inside the jail. We currently have a population of about 415 inmates. Of that population, about 77 are female inmates. This right here is our female maximum security uh, pod. We have uh, 15 cells in there. Usually this is a 23 hour uh, day lockdown with one hour out for recreation. My name's Stacy Adams. Right now I'm 46 years old. I'm here at this jail because there are no beds available in prison. I would like to serve time in prison. It just, you have a lot more freedom, more jobs, more classes, things you need to do to get your life together. I'm pretty content right now where I'm at in this jail because I do have a job. I am up here from 6.30 a.m. until 2.30, 3 o'clock. My name is Rose Williams. I grew up in state's custody from birth all the way up until I graduated from high school. Drug use, I can tell you the exact date it started. Believe it or not, it was the day that my son passed away. December 11th of 1998, he was three months and 10 days old. They say that you have a defining moment in your life that changes you. That honestly changed me. Probably not for the good at all because I did get addicted to drugs. Bad thing about it, it was my husband who offered them to me to help me feel better, but it didn't make me feel better. So I did pain pills. Drugs is what led me to commit the charges that I did because out of anger. Because I was every time I was on drugs, I was very angry and I overreacted one day and burnt down some people's homes, all because of drugs. <laughs> There's and because I chose to. My name is Ann Coria. I'm the district public defender for the 7th Judicial District here in Tennessee. I've been an attorney since 1986, so I've been doing some version of this for a long time. Most of the women that I represent have a drug problem. I would say 90% of all our clients are in for that, and so I have to tie the incarceration rate to that. There's an underlying problem here is why, why? Why are drugs the outlet for people's unhappiness? I think until we address that, we're not gonna address this bigger problem in our society. I can definitely detect that most of my female clients have past trauma issues. My drug life started, I was 12, started drinking, just hanging out with friends, thought it was the cool thing to do. I started smoking pot at 17. I went from drinking to nerve pills to cocaine. I moved to Kentucky and there my cocaine habit got real bad. 2000 I moved back and ever since 2001 I think is when I started coming back to jail. Which I didn't really catch any big charges in those days. 2008 was my first felony charge. It was a theft of a vehicle. I did not do it per se but I took the charge to get out of jail. A lot of people do that, take charges to get out of jail because um, you don't want to sit in jail and do the time. And then I quit doing cocaine. I quit, I quit doing everything except ex I started on that methamphetamines. My family is also drug addicts. My mother, she died from infection in her body. Her whole body was infected and she died from opiates. My dad is handicapped from drug use. I have two sisters. Yes, one is here right now. I have served time with my sisters before. It is very hard to serve time with family members. My son is in jail right now too. So I, I just don't know why we run to drugs. 
It's just strange. There is a lot more women getting in trouble and coming to jail. Most of the women in here are on drug charges. There's a lot of young people in here. They are under 30. There's quite a few of them, and they're just coming in left and right. There's several of us that are older and just sick of the life, you know, and want more. And we try to help the younger ones, and they're just not listening. When it gets overcrowded in the jail, it is miserable. Like in our unit, everything echoes. So it's very loud in there. Sometimes they want to bring drugs in and that causes problems in the unit. It just makes life so much harder. I was a state inmate after I was sentenced. That means I could go to prison at any time. All they had to do was call my name and I would be going to prison. But in a county jail, if you're a state inmate, they offer you jobs to help you get two for ones or time off your sentence for good behavior. Men have a whole lot more opportunities in the jail than women. Um, women have probably tops 15 jobs available to them while men have, I don't even know how many, there's so many. They got laundry, kitchen, work crew. They get to leave the jail to go to work. So they have more opportunities to get jobs compared to women in the jail. But women have a better opportunity of getting the MRR classes, the GED classes, parenting classes, anger management classes, more than the men do because the men do have jobs that they have to do. The female population in our jail has skyrocketed over the time period that I've been here. There are more and more statutes that have been passed that require mandatory jail time. When I came here, there were very few other than really serious offenses like that were not probatable offenses, you know, murder, sex offenses, things like that. Now we have more misdemeanors that carry mandatory jail time. For example, possession of methamphetamine, not for resale, but just simple possession is a class A misdemeanor, but it carries a mandatory 30 days in jail now. I've been here since May 14th of 2019, consecutively I've not left. I did bond out prior to this and come back real quick, three weeks, two months, and got received new charges. I want to be done with the life, but in my situation, I got in trouble and got a driving charge. I didn't have a license. My husband was sick that day, throwing up, and he had just picked me up from work. I was driving and they stopped me, and he seen that he was sick and all that, so he just gave me a citation for it. But. When I went to court for the citation, they arrested me for the violation pretrial. And so when I come back to jail, that violated my probation. It's just a ridiculous cycle. Once female inmates, which are in the system, it's hard for them to get back out due to violations uh, such as probation and things like that. I've seen inmates get released on probation and turn around and maybe we have them three more times on violations under the same charge or more. The hardest decision I had is who was going to pick me up because I could call my local drug dealer to come pick me up and got high in the parking lot. Or I could have called my best friend to pick me up and take me to the halfway house. And I chose for my best friend to pick me up and take me to the halfway house. When I came out, my daughter was graduating from high school. My kids never seen me sober a day in their life until the day I walked out of jail. I got to watch my daughter graduate. I got to see her go to college, clean and sober. And I had to do certain things in order to get my son back. When I first got out of jail, I went to a halfway house and I started doing home health care that just wasn't really suited for me, so I went and got my son back, was staying with a friend, and I was trying to find a good job, and I finally called Food City one day and just told them, look, I'm an ex-con, I'm a recovering drug addict, I 
been clean this at the time. It was 34 months I was clean. So I, I just need a job. And they gave me a chance. And I refused to let them down. When I get released out of here, I would really love to move away from here because obviously this county is not for me. I just want, would like to help people get something out of life better than trouble and jail and drugs, death. One of my managers made the comment that he didn't know that I was in jail or being released. And he made the comment that every person that's in prison, they're just gonna go back because that's all they know. 90% probably, that's true, but I'm not gonna be a repeat offender. And it offended me that he assumed that everybody in prison wants to be there or wants to not do good, just wanna end up back there. I don't wanna end up back there. I don't wanna be a number. I wanna be a person, so, but it's choices. You have to make good choices in order to do that. I've been working there over a year. Um, I started out as a closer there, worked up to being a cake decorator. Now I'm a sales coordinator there. So only thing that can stop me is myself. I'm going up, I'm not going backwards.